one. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, it's Mark with Limo Marketer, and I'm joined here by Mary Onstead. Did I say that right? Onstead? You did. Perfect. Awesome. Mary Onstead with Compass Limousine. Mary's out of Dallas. And so just wanted to thank you so much for doing this, Mary. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, can I help? Yeah, no. Um, so, can you give us a little bit of a uh, background on? Um, because Mary's a new operator, she started her business this year. Can you give me a little background on what you were doing before you started your limo business? What made you decide to get into it? And, um, you know, um, yeah, yeah, would love to hear about that. Well, it's kind of, it, it, it shocks a lot of people that I know. So my background is I've done a lot of real estate, kind of, you know, had some investing. I used to flip houses. I have some rental properties, not a lot, but some. So um, I was kind of, I'm going to say semi-retired and I just had too much time on my hand and that was just getting to be more and more. And uh, I got really tired of that. So, and I felt isolated. So I said, I need to do something to get around people. So I said, I'm going to drive Uber, the old Uber thing. So <clears throat> I got out there and started doing that, I guess about a little over a year ago in the August, I'm going to say. Was that Uber Black or regular Uber? I was doing Uber Select because I have a Tesla. And it was okay. a new Tesla. Nice. And um, I started having, and I didn't know it a whole lot. And I started having some people say, hey, do you have a car? Do you do this? I'd love for you to drive me. And so I thought, well, okay, maybe I want to do Uber Black. Um, and because I really wasn't a big fan of Uber X and that crowd. It was, you could tell there was a difference in the clientele. Yeah. So I started looking into what that entailed. And so you have to have an operating authority, which is a ton of hoops you have to jump through. You have to have a website, you know, you have to have an LLC, you have to have all these stickers and permits. And so you either have to work for somebody that has one or you have to do your own and get commercial insurance. So I thought, well, of course I'm going to do my own. I'm, so once I started getting into the process, I'm like, well, shoot, I don't, I'm not going to do Uber anymore. So, yeah. I, I set my LLC to be effective January 1 of 2019. And I actually got my operating authority. You know, I got a, a logo and all that kind of stuff. Actually, it was Compass Car Service at first, and I'll tell you how that changed. So I, I <clears throat> got all that, and I got the operating authority at the end of February. Got my first ride, which happened to be a Limo Anywhere affiliate out of New York, wow. on March 15th of this year. Wow. Okay. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I could just pass out cards. You know, I didn't really know the business, obviously, because I didn't have experience in it. So I decided, I started looking around on the internet. I see that there was going to be the LCT show out in Vegas. I said, well, I'm going to go to that. It's intimidating, obviously, because I didn't know what I was doing. So I go out there and oh my God, I <laughs> talk about a little fish in a big pond. But I started going to the sessions and I, um, I went to Bill Faith's. I think it was limo 101 session, which really for me, I learned a lot. And I, well, one of the things, my big takeaways was the way I was going to do it, wasn't going to cut it. So I kind of had to have it come to Jesus. Am I either going to just kind of get out and change, you know, just stop while I'm ahead or am I going to yeah. dive all in? So obviously I decided to dive all in and I've gone to some of his training. I've met people. Um, by the way, I'm really not an extrovert. I'm going to say I'm an omnivert. I'm kind of more of an introvert. Really? I, oh, really, yeah, I want to get hurt by nature, but I can get out and do it. I just have to back off sometimes and have some me time. But, but I did, you know, I kind of pushed myself. I love learning. So that was helpful. Um, so I kind of dove in and, you know, here I am. I have, I kind of did some stuff backwards. I got a, got a couple of cars, which wasn't a smart thing to do. Um, I, Talk to Eric Devlin, who most of you probably know, owns Premier. Um, and he actually advised me, he was talking about all that's entailed and employees and everything. He advised me to use independent operators, which I really didn't even barely know what that was. And, and I was at the airport one day and I, I kind of started watching chauffeurs and picked one that I really liked, um, just how he held himself and how he looked and dressed and everything. Yeah. And I started talking to him, gave him my card, and he's, it's turned out he's still with me. He's really unbelievable. He has a good book of business. He's professional. Everybody loves him. He had an Escalade. Um, and he's helped me find some other independent operators. Nice. Um, you met him at the airport? How did you meet him again? I met him at the airport. I was, I was waiting on a client and, and the baggage claim. And I saw him also. So I just started talking to him. 
and his name is Tracy and he's fantastic. I, I'm going to try to figure out how I can um, get him into the company. I think, I think I can make that happen. I don't know if I can afford him, but he has a really good book of business and you know, he likes how I've grown the business. Um, and I think so, I offer some things, you know, on the back end and he, he can, you know, I would call him my lead chauffeur and probably eventually have him be a trainer. You know, if I could, that's kind of my dream with him. And, uh, there's some other guys, but nice. So, so here I am. Uh, I've learned a lot. I'm still learning a lot. Um, I didn't even know the vocabulary, but thankfully with all the Facebook groups and all the wonderfully, I've, I've been pleasantly surprised how helpful other operators are um, to help, help me learn. Yeah, that's a huge takeaway there, that whole Facebook community. Yeah. You know, time. 10, 15 years ago, you know, that wasn't around and you can learn so much as a new operator. Uh, you've really learned probably so much in the past, in the past year about the business, right? Yeah. Right. And even just the, the software, Limo Anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been helpful too, because I've gotten some jobs through that. I joined the NLA, which is how I got a, a, an affiliate, kind of a contract that lasted between early August to just ended in December. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to use all the tools I have to. Awesome. So, so how did you start uh, originally? Because you said you, before I hit record, we were talking and you said you do a little bit of affiliate work. Uh, how did you start marketing your own business, trying to acquire your own clients? Did you still know some people from when you were doing Uber or how did you get I your- got nothing from Uber. As a matter of fact, when I, before I really kind of officially started, I'm going to say um, initially before I went live after the LCT show, I tried to do some Uber black and didn't really have any luck there. I gave out some cars, you know, you never hear from them again. Yeah. Um, I just didn't do enough of that. Um, Uber black, you know, you have to wait around a lot. So I had a big learning curve there. You know, you try to figure out where to be at the right time. Yeah. So I kind of abandoned that. And I think through my sphere of influence, some people I know, uh, Facebook, uh, starting to put it out there. I kind of slowly was getting business here and there. I mean, the first few months it was, you know, not very busy. I mean, I might have three or four rides a week, um, but okay. it, that's, that's grown. Um, it, as I've, from people I know and through some of their business and through actually some of my IOs, I've kind of, it's just steadily grown, but not enough. That's why I wanted to start with you because I wanted to yeah. go outside. I was going to, I was stuck and I could see it was just kind of moving at a molasses pace, <laughs> sure. but for me, it was a molasses pace. Anyway. Yeah. And so what, uh, what do you own right now in terms of vehicles that, that you actually own? <laughs> Too many. Um, and I'm kind of rethinking that. Um, <laughs> I actually, the, the Tesla is in the fleet, but I really, it's, I don't think it's a great fleet vehicle. Yeah. Um, because it's not in the back. It's not real roomy. It just kind of depends on who your client is and if this is a short trip or not. Yeah. Um, but I do have a, a Volvo, a, a new 19 Volvo and I have a Cadillac XTS and I have an Escalade that I had, but it's in fantastic shape. It's a 17. And, right. um, and then I got a Sprinter when I got out of the show that has been uh, probably one of the best things I've done. I mean, that has really started getting traction. Um, really like a lot of affiliate work like other people uh, actually my clients um and really? some of Tracy's clients um have started using it through that we've you know I'm like look we can do anything we've booked some affiliate work with some um coaches because once they get into that you can you see they want to do other things that's what I've found anyway uh, what do you mean when they get into that like once they see that that we had a sprinter they're more they realize that you can maybe do coaches and so we've kind of told yeah we can do anything if you want to coach and so we've actually done some coaches we've done it oh nice um, you know we farmed out um, sure. there's an affiliate here that i like to use for that because they i like their vehicles and uh and their drivers and they're used they're very i that's i kind of use the same affiliate although i do need to find some more for that kind of work that's really kind of the direction i think i want to go um once i figured out that i i could earn you know for a an hourly part of the day, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Revenue versus that's a lot of airplane airport trips. Um, that's right. kind of, and I trust me, I'm doing them and I'm happy to do those airport trips because yeah, those are clients. It kind of keeps you you busy and keeps yeah. some money coming in. But um, 
you know, some of those have developed, you know, once you tell them you have a sprinter, I've done some, you know, Christmas light tours for some of the people taking some of their groups, you know, it's just been nice. Yeah, so. yeah. And I'm sure some of those transfers, those can turn into potentially other, depending on the client, potentially other jobs that might, you know, book their larger year sprinter or, or whatever. So you went and bought several vehicles then. So you kind of did it. I'm guess if you had to do it over again, would you I would have not do that. held off on? I would have held off. And as a matter of fact, I'm kind of, actually they're handy to have though. So especially for this, this next week, <laughs> we're going to yeah. be probably using every one of them. We will be using every one of them. But um, I think if I was going to do anything, I may have, the sprinter, but maybe not all the others and just farm that out. And I'm, I'm kind of right now and I'm going to, I'm, do I want to kind of go with the sprinters and just farm out all that other stuff? I'm not sure. I mean, I may always just want to keep at least one, you know, sedan. Yeah. Maybe SUV and kind of beef up the sprinter. Okay. Cool. And maybe, and eventually I'd like to get into some of the, the coaches. Mini and... coaches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. And so we started together back. Was it, in October? Yeah, we went, you and I, you went live with me on October 15th. Right, right. Okay. So tell me about, um, and I know in the first month, we're still figuring it out, dialing things in. Uh, so tell me like about the first month or so and kind of what your experience was like, um, what the leads were like. Okay. Well, at first, I mean, Dallas is, is you know, you, you, I'm sure you, there's a curve with figuring out our market and yeah big it's a like, big it can be a very large area yeah. right? and um and figuring out the right words and everything so i think a lot initially a lot of my leads were just far and wide and yeah. you know it would be on the other side of fort worth which honestly for me to do it it's not real profitable i mean they're better off calling somebody in fort worth um yeah so i talked to you i said let's kind of bring rein that in a little bit which is was helped i did get some leads around Dallas that i did um, but a lot of them were wide. So once we ran that in, I started getting more good leads for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and some of them are tire kickers, uh, sure. especially the kind of business, you know, I'm not cheap and that's not the, I'm not just going to give away the business. Um, yeah. I'm, I want to stay true to, you know, I want to be perceived as a higher end in our business and, uh, and I want to get good customers that, that appreciate that level of service. Um, mm -hmm. so but my, I will say this, uh, there's definitely tire kickers, but I have gotten some really great leads. I've gotten some, some hourlies, some clients that are, have come back already. Um, nice. and so that's really good. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, I don't think it's, um, uh, coincidence that my revenue has doubled <laughs> since I started doing this in yeah. a short amount of time. I mean, I was, you know, I was excited that, I mean, my, everything was going up, you know, I probably was at 8,000 in November, um, has, I'm not going to attribute it all to limo marker because there was a really good affiliate job, but, yeah, yeah. um, it was $17,000 and I was nice. blown away. My goal was 10 yeah. and kind of at the end of the month, it kind of blew it away. And a lot of that was definitely, um, calls from Google but yeah. then this month. It's going to be the same. And I got a super fantastic lead that's gonna I think go on for for a long time out of it so yeah it's yeah. been really good to me I mean it, they're not all good but there's some diamonds in there so well and I think um you're just you know because we've spoken on the phone several times I can tell you're a very easy person to talk to how do you follow up because I, I think you're really good at the sales aspect which I always tell people it's you know, so important. Uh, you have to have both things, right? You have to get the leads, but you also have to have someone who's uh, talking uh, to these people, making them feel comfortable and, you know, kind of forging that relationship. So what does your kind of follow up look like? And, well, uh, I'll say how it was in the beginning. Um, I'm going to say at the very beginning, I was a little intimidated by it. Um, I don't know why it just was. And what kind of got me out of that, I don't think I told you this, Mark, but one of the very first leads I got was Tyler Sagan. He is the star, if you know hockey, he's the star of the Dallas Stars. He played for the Bruins. He was like one of the top, you know, number two pick in the NFL. His assistant or him? Was it actually him? 
He oh, actually no called, and I saw his name on that ad and I called him. I was like laying in bed. I called him and got him on the phone and it was, you know, pick him up after the game with a couple of other players and take them, you know, out to uh, AT&T where they're having a concert. So that was really pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think that has anything to do with this other. I think it was the very coincidence, but, um, so that kind of taught me, you know, you got to respond. I mean, at first, I think I was a little slower on the take, but yeah. what what really has helped my, I guess, conversions has been when those come in, I get on it. I, I, if I am even driving, I will text them and say, yeah. I got your thing. Someone will be calling you as soon as we get a free moment here. And and I call him. The guy I had last night, he said, the reason I called because you were the first one to call. And um, oh, wow. I, okay. I really try to call him. I get that quote to him and I text him and say, it's on the way. If I don't get him on the phone, sometimes I won't answer. Um, you know, I'll text him and say, hey, it's Mary Compass. If you have any questions, I sent that quote. Check in your spam box if you don't see it. Um, so I really try to stay with him, which is getting harder to do as my business is growing. I'm to the point where I'm going to hire some um, call in phone help to yeah you know, so you don't that, have to that's the key i mean you you cuz people are going to keep scrolling you know they're going to yeah. keep they're they're in the moment right then they want to quote and yeah if they don't hear from you i've had so even the people i've converted some of them said man people didn't call me back or they they were you know they were like no we can't do that and uh, so <laughs> i think that's yeah. helped Oh, I know it's helped. <laughs> so what, what helped you go from, because I, I know that's a struggle with a lot of smaller operators. They're not real. They might've never been in a job where they did sales. Like, you know, uh, what helped you get into that mindset? Was it that one hockey player when you call him right back and you booked him and you're like, all right, I need to just be on the ball with these or what, what kind of did that for you? That well, you, you know, it's still not real easy for me. I don't consider myself a salesperson, but I'm, I'm, I can be pretty comfortable just talking to people. So yeah. I don't even know that I try to sell them. You know, I just yeah. try to say, Hey, we'd love to help you out. And, uh, and I try to learn a little bit more about their trip and if there's any kind of way to connect. Cause if, you know, I try to, I think I can kind of create if possible a little relationship with them on the phone and just talk to them like they're my friend. And I, but I don't try to sell them. And yeah. you try to help, right? Yeah, I try to help them out. That's exactly right. That's a good way to put it. And you know, if, if they're trying to, if it's six men trying to cram six guys in the um, SUV, I will say, look, if, if, if it's, if you want, I'm going to send you some pictures of our sprinter. I think you're going to be a lot more comfortable in that. I'll certainly be happy to take you in the SUV, but you know, this may be a better option. So I try to kind of get that in there and, and let them know. And well, usually when they see pictures, they, you know, whether it's off Google or not, they will try to do it. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of newer operators, they hear that sales word or they think selling and it conjures up images of a cheesy used car salesman. Exactly. But when really what you just said is really the best salespeople, they're, just, they're really just trying to help mm -hmm. and, um, be of assistance and they're not, you know, trying to sell because. I, exactly. I have literally. And, and I think, I don't know if this will help me down the road or not, but I have literally helped people. I had given them other operators numbers. Like one guy was way far and, and it was an older man. And I knew he was like, he was like, you know, 80 miles away and he wanted to go to the airport and it would have taken, it was going to be an hour late. And, yeah. I, knew he lived and I said, look, I'm going to, I said, I'll, he said, well, that's just too much. I used to have a guy, a girl that did it for, you know, $70. And I said, look, I said, you're going to get a better rate with an operator near you. So yeah. I said, I'm going to give you some people to call. And I gave them their numbers. And I did it with somebody the other day that was like, oh, I could kind of tell. I hate to say, I, I guess I was typecasting, but I, I know where she was calling from. And I know people in that area, it's not as high of an income. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's way too much for our family. And, uh, and, Cause she just, you know, she wanted to see, and it was, it was a lot more than she was willing to spend. And I said, Hey, I said, let me look up and see what Uber would cost. I said, you know, you could do Uber SUV. You could do two. So I gave her the prices. I looked it up right there. So yeah. it's not, it's not going to be for everybody, but no, I think people appreciate it if you're going to help them out. Or, oh, sure. It always comes back around too. even things that you might not think 
you know, how could this possibly benefit me? It's where when you put that out in the world, you, you get back, you know, what you put out. And so that's a great lesson right there. You know, even if you can't, you know, um, even if they're not going to book with you, if you can still help them, um, it, it's worth it to spend a little extra time because over time that just builds up and it builds momentum. And so, um, how much of your new business would you, so, um, you're at, what was your average month like in September, October around what? Seven, 8,000, 9,000? Yeah, around seven, like maybe 67. You know, I think my biggest month prior was probably, you know, 82. I can't remember if it was 88 or 8,200. Nice. You know, but I was, you know, I'd see like 4,500, you know, a little bit of an increase every, every month. Of course I'm, you know, worried already about January. <laughs> Now it's starting off on a good note, the January 1st, but you know, now I got to repeat, rinse and repeat, right? Yeah. Well, because weren't you saying your target was it for November was 10 K and yeah. then you completely blew past it, but then yeah. that sets the bar higher. Cause you're like, Oh shoot. You know, now I want to, you know, it's almost like your new target in a way. And yeah. you said this month is uh, approximately about that. About that. Uh, which that big job really helped, right? That was I'm at ten already without including that big job. Oh, okay. So, in early, if, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I thought, oh my goodness, there's no way I'm gonna, you know, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> and so, we're, look, we still have next week and and a few more days, and you just never know, you know, you never know. Yeah, gonna come in. One came in last night at eleven. That's gonna add sixteen hundred dollars. So, yeah, that right there. I mean. It's crazy that you were able to get that call because you were uh, you were driving, you were just picking up a client, right? Yeah. And so they're uh, about to get in the car, and the call came in, and then while we were talking, they started. And fortunately, it's people they were super friendly, and they were totally not even caring. But I said, okay, I got to get off the phone, and so I'm gonna call you back as soon as I drop them off. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And so, so what are your goals for next year? Do you think? Have you thought anything about like kind of? like revenue wise, where you would like to be? Because for a new operator, your first ride you said was March 15th. Mm -hmm. And to be like ending the year doing 17K a month, uh, two months in a row pretty much, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty incredible. Probably higher than you had even really set the bar for yourself. I, it was right? Definitely, I didn't see that coming. Um, yeah. I, you know, my goal right now, I'm gonna have to sit down and really look at it. And I, you know, I was thinking 200K for this year which I think is pretty lofty. I mean, I'm going to have to get after it and stay after it because, you know, every month isn't going to be the best month. You know, yeah. August in Dallas is slow because it's so stinking hot. You know, even the business travelers, you know, people don't want to come here. Um, well, most people leave, especially the people that use black car service and they go to Colorado or California, their second homes. Yeah. <laughs> it's quiet around here, but. All right. But, and, you know, right now I'm thinking, couple hundred thousand is my goal. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, I think, uh, I think you'll hit it with how these past two months have gone is typically, do you know, are these two months good months for your market or are well, they actually a lot of people have said they're not. Um, as a matter of fact, I was talking to Tracy earlier this morning and you know, he said, wow, usually this is dead. And he said, I've been, he said, he's been pretty busy and, uh, you know, some of his clients, you know, because we have a sprinter, some we've used them with his clients. Uh, they're now ordering with him. They call him, you know, ours was booked. So he's, I'm helping him find, you know, found, I helped him find another one somewhere else. But uh, so that's, you know, a good thing. Yeah, definitely. So, so what would you, what would you say to anyone considering, um, you know, uh, what, I, and by the way, what I offer, uh, have been helping Mary with is really just, uh, you know, Google ads, uh, I think we're even doing a Bing ads campaign. So getting her leads for people that are looking for what she offers and granted she, she is a higher end service. And I know, unfortunately with how Google works, you can't just get the, like the, the, the higher end leads. Um, it's just, it doesn't work that way. So you need to get a good, good size lead volume because there will be some that are good and some that aren't so good. So what, what would you tell someone that was considering using like a service, uh, my service, uh, what would you tell them? Um, what are your kind of recommendations for them as far as um, what to expect and whether they should do it or not? Well, 
you know, I would, I would definitely say, you know, it, it took me a while to, to, to decide to spend the money. And, yeah. but I could tell that it wasn't cutting it with my sphere of influence, which isn't very big. And, you know, my Facebook page and all that. I mean, um, and word of mouth, um, I knew I needed to get out there and, and do something. And I actually tried to create a couple of ads myself and on Facebook and talk about getting some bad, you know, I got a lot, I got people call me, but not one of them was a good, was a good client. No, so, no. you know, I don't know that any of them converted at all, but, uh, so I needed to call in the pros and, um, it, you know, it's been good because I wanted to move to the next level. And I, I really don't think, I, I honestly don't think I could have be where I am right now, even these last two months without it. And, um, cause I've gotten some, some clients that have already repeated. Yeah. And, and and the, and the one, you know, one hourly that we got, a guy came from New York and, you know, he told the driver, he said, this was fantastic. We did a great job. He said, we come here a lot. And he said, we'll definitely be calling you guys back. So that was really nice. That was like a $1,275 hourly that day. So, wow. um, you know, it's those that kind of keep you okay. Yeah. You, just never know. you don't know, you know, if it's going to be a dud or if it's going to be, you know, jackpot, you know, I didn't wow. tell them about the, the call I got, it, it was really shocking that this came in off the ad, but you know, I'm sitting there, I was actually at my office and um, I see the notification come up and it said hourly multi day. And of course I immediately called back. Yeah. Yeah. Multi day. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, or multi something. And I immediately called back and started talking to this girl. She's out in California and, um, Turns out she is works with the, has a production company and um, she was looking for transportation to cover her talent. That's uh, going to be here for the NHL winter classic New Year's Eve and New Year's day. And um, so once I kind of got that out of her, um, then I started transitioning into some things I've learned from Bill um, just by listening to him and, and realizing that what, this person who's a production company wants somebody that's going to, that's going to make them look good. That's going to make them yeah. stress free, make them take care of all the details and communicate with them. I mean, well, I'm not dealing with the bride, you know, I, I, so I told her, I said, this is perfect. I said, we can cover whatever you got. So I'm sitting here thinking, how am I going to do it if it's a ton, but I, I figured yeah, yeah. this was a month ago. So I knew I had time. <laughs> um, but I said, I said, we just got finished doing some VIPs. I said, our guy, I said, that's what we're really good at. That's our wheelhouse. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's not, I mean, we're not, but you know, I know I have guys that are really good at that. And I said, we can navigate around those events. And so we have the vehicles. I said, those, they always like Escalades and navigators. And I said, we have that. And I said, if you need a sprinter, well, she wasn't even planning on it, but now they're doing two. Oh, so, nice. Okay. So we're going to be doing, taking care of Dan and Shay, which is a popular band and uh midland which is another popular country band and just yesterday when they sent me some information they they didn't tell me they were adding but they added i think his name is jake hook he just won the voice so he's going to be so we're going to be taking them and so that's going to probably be at least ten thousand dollars for those two nice. days and she called and off just two days what? two days How many she said, um it's going to be we got two sprinters Two S two Escalades and one we just added yesterday sedan. Oh, okay. And my IOS just has a brand new BMW, but now I'll tell you more. Just came in last night, but um, and she actually and I said this is perfect. I said because these guys are going to be great. They know how we know how to take care of people. Well, you know if you, they have special requests, let us know. And yeah. I said what I'm good at is the details and manage and make everything run smooth. And I said, communicating with you, I said, cause I know you don't want to have to worry about anything. Exactly. I'll so me back the next day and we got the job and you know, I didn't discount it. I, I probably should charge more cause it's new year's Eve. That's a learning thing. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm good night. I'm excited. And she said she wanted to set up an account. So I'm hoping that there's oh, business. That's pretty cool. That could be really so good. Last night I got a call the one that came in when I was picking up those clients at 11 and um, I could tell she was like wanting to talk then. And I said, look, I can't talk right now, but I'll call you back. And turns out she works for the NFL that she said, I was referred to you. 
said, you do a great job. And she has, uh, we need an hourly the New Year's Eve for some that they call them alumni, some former players. And then for yeah. the morning of on the first, we're going to do an early transfer with three different players in different vehicles and then pick them up at two thirty two. So that's about another sixteen hundred dollars. Nice. So that was a referral from the the girl at the production company in California. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Already she getting said, referrals. She spoke really highly of you and she said so or whoever said really didn't call you and she was in a panic. She said, I feel like I you know this just came in and I'm so worried that we were going to be able to get this taken care of. I said, don't worry about it. We we cover it and we'll take great care of them. So well she called you at what 11 year time which is uh past midnight probably her yeah time. she was on the east coast and yeah. uh so we and she even said that she goes that's oh, two o'clock in the morning you know because by the time we get off the phone so yeah but wow. i said don't worry about it we'll cover it and um, i got some information and said whatever you know we, we'll take care of them so wow that's incredible so um that could be a really good who knows potential and the crazy thing is you hadn't even really delivered the actual service yet no you know but she still referred you which i think speaks volumes about your sales ability and you haven't even been doing this that long um well and i i'm gonna say again i'm i'm this is i'm not trying to sit here and plug bill faith but i i have kind of really yeah. signed up for some of his stuff and he kind of preaches a being responsive and also, uh, you know, know your persona and, and yep. it's, it's real important before and after because the trip is the easy part, you know, if you communicate with them. So every now and then I would say, Hey, I would just email them just to stay in touch. Cause I, this call came in almost a month ago for the, the winter classic. <coughs> and, um, so I you say, Hey, you know, if you know any, if, if you can tell me if they have any special drink preferences or snacks, I want to make sure we, you know, we make them feel at home in the cars. And so I'm trying to keep touch with being responsive when they do want something and, and yeah. also keeping in touch with them to get, you know, let them know that we're on top of it. And I told her, I said, we'll communicate as little or as much as you want, just so you're in the loop. Let me know your preferred way, you know, stuff like that. How do you want us to communicate with you? That's, that's awesome. And you learned all that through probably limo you and attending. Yeah. yeah events. And yeah, no. So uh, another thing you can, you know, anyone watching can learn, Mary is like constantly learning. She's trying to get better. Um, and you know, the, the, I think the most valuable skill you can have is, you know, being able to talk to a client, make them, you know, trust you, build that relationship. Um, that's really how you get that repeat business. And the crazy thing is Mary already got referred and she hasn't even really delivered the service yet. So that, that's, yeah, that's kind of, it, it, it trust me. When I say, I say, I can make that happen. I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to make that happen? <laughs> you know, but you just do your best. And yeah, no, exactly. You got to jump in the deep end, figure out how to swim, right? <laughs> That's right. Even, you know, even if I, I mean, there's people to call a little, and I know I can, I do know I can make it happen. It's just a matter of how. I'll feel a lot better once it's done. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So, well, I would say this, set the bar high next year, because I think it probably surprised you how much you're able to do um you know this year so uh I well so. uh what's that i hope so yeah no i'm sure you will um so thanks so much mary uh for for doing this and uh i know you're gonna absolutely crush it next year and so guys like if you take anything from this video like you want to keep learning keep improving keep getting better at your craft because again the most valuable thing i think is being able to talk to a client on the phone build that relationship. Um, just getting leads isn't enough. That, that will never make you successful. Uh, you have to be responding quickly and, um, and truly wanting to help, not just sell them your service. And even if you can't help them, referring them to someone who can, um, because I do believe that always comes back around and you do that. Oh, in one thing I forgot to say now, I can't get, I haven't been able to I'm getting better at it, but immediately respond to every person. And and I was having problems with my, uh, my uh, catastrophic server uh, failure at, in motion, kind of in the middle of this, oh, right. it really kind of causing some problems for me. And so somehow I kind of missed a lead and, uh, and one time, you know, I wasn't responsive because it kind of, I figured it out later in the day. So one thing I do with them 
is I do contact them, even if I'm sending them an email or text and say, look, um, I, I really apologize for not getting back to you sooner. That's not how we do business. Um, and I said, I'm, I'm sure you probably already found transportation, but I did not want to let you, you know, I didn't want to drop the ball. I'm going yeah. ahead and send you the quote anyway. And if we can ever help you, then I just try to do that. It may or may not do good. Actually, one of them, um, they booked with Execucar, who's now going out of business, because he told me, well, I've already booked with Execucar. I said, okay, well, if we can help you in the future. Well, somehow that fell through, and he ended up calling me back. Oh. And, uh, and he in, ended up booking a, a, you know, round trip airport. No um, way. And, and, and it's the first time he'd ever booked a car service to the airport, and he loved it. So that was, you know, I think we'll get more business from him. Nice. And that was one you didn't follow up with right away, but even though it had been – an hour, a few yeah. hours, you still did it because, yeah. like, hey, what do I have to lose? So that's, that's another great lesson, right? Yeah. Just because, because look, life happens, especially when you're, you know, growing your business. And, <laughs> you're the only one doing everything. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Which, um, by the way, I, I forgot to ask you this, but you still do a little bit of driving. You're trying to yeah. less and less as time. I'm doing on. a little bit of driving. And honestly, you know, some days, like I, I try to say, okay, I've got to not drive so I can work on some details and business stuff and follow yeah. up and make plans. And, uh, but then, you know, some, and I do drive on it, you know, on occasion and uh, I'm going to drive for the NHL winter classic. Cause I want, Probably you know what I want? I honestly want to be there cause I want to see if I can somehow get some pictures and I want to be able to use that on my marketing and That's I'm going to have a better idea. chance of happening yeah. if I'm there, you know, Hey, can we, you know, if we take pictures, can we put it on, you know, I ask them, can we do that and see if I can even get a testimonial out of it. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, I know we had talked about that the other day. I think that's really smart. And yeah, it's all of you watching, like, that's how you need to be thinking. Um, you want to be getting testimonials from your clients, especially like this is, this could be a very large potential job yeah. and um, very good potential client. So, um, so, so many great lessons. Um, well, Mary, thanks again for doing this. I won't keep you any longer because I think we've already run probably over 20 minutes. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you. No, no, it's, it was great because I think any new operator can learn a lot from your kind of story so far. And, you know, the, uh, you've grown pretty quickly. And so um, congratulations on that. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And so that's it.